Hey皆さん, konnichiwa! This is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some Asian beauty product empties. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and channel it Shinei now. So it has definitely been a while since I did my last empties video. I used to do it every two months, but I kind of missed the last one and then the one before and then... <laughs> so I thought I would kind of change the frequency of doing them. I thought I would try to do it every three months so I can keep up with posting them on time. So I'll do it seasonally. thought I would share with you guys the products I emptied up until now. Like half of it is Japanese beauty products and then half of it is Korean beauty products. So let's just dive right into reviewing these guys. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> So I'm going to start with J Beauty and two products from the same brand, Muji. So I have done a full review video on a ton of Muji skincare products. If you do want to check it out, please see it in the iCard. I go quite into a variety of products, but I did empty out two of theirs, or pretty much. I try to keep a little bit so I can show you guys the texture. First of all, the Muji Moisturizing Milk in Moisture. This one is such an easy product to reach for. It's definitely one of my favorite milk or emulsion type product. So basically, it is a very lightweight lotion type moisturizer or emulsion that glides across the skin. It also layers with other products really, really well. And I think one of the best kind of selling points of this one is that you can choose the level of moisture depending on your skin type or the season. So the one I got was moisture, which is like the medium moisture level one. And then they also have a light and then a high moisture. You can choose depending on how dry your skin is or if it's like winter or summer. The main moisturizing ingredients are glycerin and squalane. They are quite high up on the ingredients ingredients list which is great and it leaves your skin with a really really nice kind of natural glow it worked perfect for me in the am i do feel like at night i want to use something a little richer a little bit more creamy and thick but during the daytime this worked so well and as i said it layers really well with other skincare and works well under makeup as well so it was a great am emulsion for me it is also free from fragrance colorants mineral oil parabens and alcohol if any of those do bother your skin and it truly lasts forever this bottle lasted me such a long time and this is like the medium size they have one that's even bigger than this honestly i think it's just one that's really really basic it's nothing like spectacular that's going to change your skin which is the point i made with a lot of muji skincare but if you're after just something basic something gentle something that's just going to maintain your skin and its moisture it is the perfect type of product for you. Next is the other Muji product, their facial wash gel. So this one is just a face wash. It is not a cleanser, so it's not made to remove makeup, but it can be used as your second step cleanse or a cleanser in the morning. So it is a very, very simple product. I actually preferred using it in the AM. Um, it leaves your skin really fresh, but not overly stripped, but not like overly hydrated either. So if you do have dr quite dry skin, it maybe could feel a little bit dry for you. But for me, having like combination dehydrated skin it did not feel kind of tight or irritating on my skin so it is nothing like wow but it definitely could be good for people who do have sensitive skin or after something basic again it is free from artificial fragrance colorant mineral oil alcohol and paraben they do have a natural fragrance to it i think it is the orange peel oil it is just a really really light fragrance it's nothing intense at all i actually quite like it it's very refreshing but not bothersome the only downside that i kind of found was sometimes it was quite hard to wash off it took a while and quite a few splashes of water to be able to get rid of it fully off my skin which was like a little bit annoying especially in the morning if I was in a rush but besides that it's just like a nice basic face wash it's not very expensive either so if you can get your hands on it and you're kind of curious I'd definitely say give it a go the next one is a sunscreen the Kose Sun Cut Water in UV Protect Essence so I went through this super, super quickly when I was using it in Japan in the warmer months because it is so easy to slap on and layer many, many times. It doesn't feel greasy. It doesn't leave a cast. It's a really nice, watery, lightweight texture that just like melts into your skin. So I used this like a lot. When I first bought it, it was like very hot summer days, but I would put it all over my body and it would just like melt in. The texture is so 
beautiful but it does dry down and doesn't leave any stickiness as you can see so i do really really like this one for its texture and it's still one of the more affordable ones in japan i mean i say more affordable but a lot of sunscreens in japan are so affordable but i'm pretty sure this one was even cheaper than the biore uv so if you come by it definitely give it a go i absolutely loved it and it's such a good cheap option but i will say you can smell the alcohol in it it does have alcohol present so if that does bother you or if you are sensitive to alcohol probably stay away from it I feel like Japanese products do include alcohol in their skin, sunscreens quite often which a lot of people probably don't like but it's not something that bothers everyone personally it does not bother me and yeah it is also fragrance free so if you can buy it in Japan 100% recommend I think it's a little bit harder to find online and overseas but if you can find a good deal on it I'd say go for it it is definitely a good affordable um, option for a sunscreen and it is SPF 50. Next is the Crassier Hadabise Wrinkle Care Facial Cream. I feel like this one like a couple people asked me about it in the past and I was using it for quite a while because it is like pretty generous. It is 30 grams. I think the concept of it is more like a sleeping mask or like a pack for wrinkles like it's supposed to fill in and plump up the skin to get rid of fine lines so that's the concept of it obviously it is used mainly around the eyes because that's where we tend to develop wrinkles first but you can also use it in your laugh lines and other areas that you have wrinkles so it's not specified that you only use it around your eyes so it is a very light lotion like texture if you're used to thick eye creams it might seem a little too lightweight but i personally really liked the texture i wouldn't say it's like amazing again but it is not a bad product and in japan it is so cheap i think it's under like a thousand yen so like even if it doesn't work out you're kind of like eh, whatever like it's so cheap and for that price i actually think it's very decent it's got in good ingredients like collagen hyaluronic acid um ceramides so it really does help kind of moisturize and plump up the skin and after reading quite a few reviews in japanese and english people did claim that it definitely helped with fine lines so very light fine lines that you might have around your eyes any type of moisturizer is going to help that but people did say that they could definitely see a difference when they used this and didn't it just wasn't like a huge difference and if you had quite deep like creases or wrinkles it wouldn't really get rid of that so if you're just starting off getting some fine lines or starting off with anti-aging products i think it is definitely a good affordable option to go for personally speaking i can't really say because i don't have like intense wrinkles but i definitely like using it around my eyes and obviously i kept using it and emptied it even if it's like a huge kind of 30 ml tube for an eye cream. Next is the Loto Merano Shi Shi Sheet Mask. I actually did a full in depth review on this one um, with the essence. So if you do want to know a lot about it, I would recommend just watching the video because I go into a full uh, review. I just thought I'd include it because I did finish them up. It is decent, although not spectacular. It is definitely lightly hydrating, smells really, really nice, and good value for being such a big bulk pack. But I would still say the Kose clear turn sheet masks are probably better value I think these are like ever so slightly more expensive and I feel like the other ones are more effective so that's my thoughts on that one and the next one oh I loved this the scalp d pure free eyelash serum so this is obviously a lash serum that's supposed to help kind of strengthen and grow and whatever do some magical business to your lashes I've talked in the past that I do have quite short thin lashes they're not like nothing but they're not huge and I felt like these definitely definitely helped make them seem longer for sure I don't know if it's enough that other people would notice but personally for my for myself I felt like it definitely made a difference it made especially my left side and like the outer corner longer and then also naturally curling more than before and it lasted a good like two months or so so I would say that's decent it's one of the kind of cheaper ones you can buy in Japan it's probably like 1,500 to 2,000 yen so it's definitely not too expensive the application is very simple also it's just a doe foot applicator which I am totally okay with as long as it's not a mascara applicator I cannot use a mascara wand applicator to put on lash serum I find it's so hard because you can't actually like 
get to the roots of your lashes. Next are two lip balms, which I'm pretty sure I've mentioned both of them many times on my channel already. The Nivea Deep Moisture Honey Flavor and the Mentholatum Melty Cream Lip Rich Honey. They're both honey. I love the smell of honey. This one is a holy grail. I have come back to this time and time again. It is so smoothing. It smells good. It's got really lasting moisture I can put on at night and in the morning my lips still feel moisturized it is one that is quite hard for me to find in Australia um, they sell a lot of other lip balms like the DHC one and things like that even in store in Australia but this one is very hard to find and it's like the one product I asked my mum to get you know on those what do you call them like those sites that basically act for you to shop in Japan and then send it to you overseas. Like I asked mom to like get this because I couldn't find it on YesStyle or Salvano or any of those sites. So it's just one that, I don't know, it's worked the best for me. I still haven't found anything that works as good and I'm definitely, definitely gonna stock up next time I'm in Japan because I mean, I thought I'd be back in Japan by now, but I definitely needed more than I thought. So definitely, definitely holy grail lip balm. And then the Mentholatum Melty lip one. This one is also really good. I really, really enjoyed it. It's definitely more a kind of glossier, more melty texture, I guess you could say, since it's called Melty Lip. And I like to use it when I want more like a glossy look or if I just want to wear lip balm, but still have really nice, like plump, juicy looking lips. And it works perfect for that. In that sense, it is kind of stickier than the Nivea. So I I prefer to use the Nivea at night so it doesn't like stick to my pillowcase or my hair or anything when I'm sleeping but definitely when I want a little bit more plumpness or glossiness I like to go for this one and they have some amazing looking flavors I haven't got to try them out yet but they've got like matcha they've got peach they have like a bubble tea one at one stage and the flavors they come out with seem mm, delicious so I will definitely um, stock up on these again once I'm in Japan but I'm pretty sure this one you can get on yes style I'm pretty sure so I'll link it and they both smell amazing well the honey one it smells so good. Now we are going to go into a K-Beauty. We have the By Wish Trend Clear Skin Shield Patch. This is one of my favorite pimple patches that I have used thus far. I feel like I've used a fair few now, but I always went for like really cheap, cheap ones. And this one, the adhesive power is so good like it sticks so well and I love it for that reason it is also very thin so it's very invisible on the skin I have had times where I went to wash my face and wash my face and didn't realize I actually still had a patch on me it does have 36 patches in two sizes and it retails for $10 on Wish Trends, so it's not like super cheap, but it's also not super expensive. Especially if you get it on sale, I'd say it's a pretty good deal. I think the Cosrx ones are like 26 patches, which is 10 less than this. And it's usually like six or seven dollars so yeah, i would say it's probably like about the same price i would definitely buy them again if um i find them on sale i do still have a couple at the moment that i have to use up of other brands so i'll try them out but so far this one has definitely been my favorite pimple patch they are so good for using after you pop the pimple which is very typical of me i would just pop it put it on and then it reduces the inflammation overnight and it doesn't leave any hardness or scabbiness or bumps on the skin, it smooths it out, there's no texture and it just leaves like the fresh scar of the um, popped pimple and I feel like that's pretty much as good as it's going to get the next day after you're popping, after you're popping a pimple. It works, it works really well for me and yeah, it's, it's terrible at finishing these reviews today, I'm just like, and yeah, and yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's it. <laughs> Next we have an Innisfree The Minimum Toner. So with this one, my mum actually bought it to use it as a mist throughout the day. Like when she's at work and stuff, she just wanted something like easy to spritz over. And she has very sensitive skin, so she tried this one since it's supposed to be very minimal ingredients. It only uses 10 ingredients, I believe, and it is made for sensitive skin. For some reason, it still irritated my mom, and she couldn't use it. She just passed it on to me and I don't like it I still use it up which is quite impressive but I mean you know it's a mist you can just use it on your body or whatever number one thing was it was so so sticky and it would not dry down I would spray it on my face even like 
whoa. Even like five minutes after I had sprayed it, it would just like cling onto like my peach fuzz and it wouldn't like dry down or like go into my skin. So I would end up having to like press it with my palms and it was sticky and ultimately just like ruin my makeup. Yeah, I just really did not like it. And I could not tell if it was hydrating or anything because it just felt like it didn't absorb in my skin. It just sat on top and it was just there and it was sticky. The mist itself was good. It was a pretty fine mist. I am still curious about other products in their range. I like the concept of using very minimal ingredients for sensitive skin and stuff like that, but this one just was not good. It was just sticky and it just felt not nice on the skin, so I'm sorry, but I definitely did not like that one. Next we have the Plant Based Time Stop Collagen Ampule. So this one uses 76% of mushroom extract instead of water, which I always like when products use like something in place of water as the main ingredient. And it is like a nourishing, plumping, anti-aging serum. So the texture of this is really, really beautiful. It's kind of this viscous, like almost slimy texture, but it glides across the skin and it dries down and absorbs very, very well. It was definitely plumping and I loved mixing it in with some of my heavier creams like the Dr. Jart Ceramidin or the REP Nourishing Cream. These are quite thick so it's sometimes hard to use them by themselves but I just pumped like one pump of this and you made it a bit more of like a lightweight texture. I actually recommend to use it by itself or mix in with a moisturizer so I really did enjoy using it that way. And also the bottle is so cool. I don't have much product so I don't know if it'll work but when you twist it open it like automatically grabs the product and puts it in the dropper and then you just have to press the top to release which is so cool i wish every serum bottle was like this it's just so convenient one disappointing thing is that it is quite a small bottle it is only 20 mils which is very small i feel like every serum typically at least has 30 if not 50 mils so 20 mils is definitely not that much and when i was filming b-roll for this one i actually I accidentally tipped some of the product over. I had it like sitting sideways and I didn't realize it was spilling and I like wasted half the product. So I feel like I definitely didn't get to see the full potential of this one. Although I have heard so many good reviews of this one and I think it's definitely a good one for people who do have more mature skin, who are losing or lacking a little bit of elasticity or plumpness in the skin. It definitely plumps up that skin and gives it a really natural glow as well. So I definitely liked it and would love to give it a go again. Um, hopefully next time I wouldn't spill it. But lastly, we have the Conleaf Rose Moisture Pad. So this is like just, you know, your typical toner pads. It's soaked with toner essence and you can just use the pad instead of your toner. My opinion on this is like so neutral. Like <laughs> it's not bad, but it's not wow. And I'm kind of just like about it. It definitely does have plenty of essence soaked into the toner so I would say it's still enough hydration even for someone who is dehydrated like me. I actually had used it when I was traveling and it was good for that reason. It's very quick and easy and it is also quite small for a toner pad product so it was very easy to pack and you don't have to worry about like the product spilling or anything. As I said I used it when I was traveling which obviously I haven't traveled in a long time and once I got home it kind of just sat on my skincare shelf and didn't really get used because it wasn't a good enough product for me to keep reaching for it. The rose scent is way too strong for me. I'm usually okay with scents, although floral scents are not my favorite and this one is definitely overpowering for me. So whenever I used it, I don't think it actually irritated my skin or itched my skin, but the smell made me feel like it was because I'm so like allergic to pollen and stuff. So it wasn't quite comfortable for me, but but no, it's not in on that one. It's very just like, mm. all right, that is all my empties for this season. I am sorry. I kind of sped through it since there was quite a few products and I didn't want this video to be a marathon. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.